Right you guys got another video here for you on how to fix USB device not recognized and we're using Windows 10 here but you can use this uh, to fix the problem in any other version of Windows. So you can see this is the problem we've got here USB device not recognized. Now I'll try to show you tutorials on how to fix stuff and how to fix real live problems and fix them. Now these are real life fixes as you can see here and we're going to go ahead and try to resolve this issue where it says USB device not recognized. So let's go into the start button and right click and go to device manager. I'm going to show you a bunch of things that you can try to try and resolve these issues. So let's open up the device manager here and take a look at what we got here. Now what we're looking for is yellow exclamation marks, uh, little triangles you can see there with a little exclamation mark in it. And this means that it's unknown USB device, it doesn't know what this device is. Now you may also see other ones with yellow exclamation mark with names on them and that means it does know what the device is but it doesn't have a driver. So let's go ahead and try to check for updates on this unknown USB device and search the internet. You can see it says here the best driver for your device is already installed. What you can do is also right click on it, go back to update driver, then go browse my device and let me pick from the list. You can see here it's an unknown USB device and you're going to click next. Now this might work uh, for say for instance the one above the focus right uh, but it won't work for this unknown uh, driver because it doesn't know what the device is and you're going to need to get the device driver for it. You can see it's got code uh, 43 and we're going to need to try and find this. Now hardware ID uh, is another option you can use but in this case it doesn't know what the hardware is it's unknown to it so by going into hardware ID here and looking for the hard hardware ID it just says failure so it won't be able to find or detect that when you're searching for it so this makes it a little bit more harder uh, to uh, try to find now once we uninstall this device driver here we're going to just uninstall it because obviously it doesn't know what it is there's not much point keeping it on there and I'll try and plug it back in and see whether it populates and finds the device itself. You can also scan for new hardware by going up to action and scan for new hardware or restart your computer at that stage but you can see it's already failed and it can't uh, detect the USB device. So at that stage what you can do here is scan for new hardware by right clicking on there and it will try to find it. If it can't find it then what you're going to need to do is try and find the driver for this particular piece of hardware. You need to examine the hardware and find out uh, what hardware it is. In this case it's a mobile phone and uh, you're going to need to try and find that uh, driver for that mobile phone. It could be an old mobile phone like this one here and you need to find the driver for it. It's not going to have all these drivers in the Windows 10 uh, database so you need to go out and find it okay so you can do a search for that particular product and try to find the driver and then hopefully this will resolve your problems so let's move on to this uh, next step here you can see this yeah, USB ID code here I'm going to do a quick search here and see whether it finds anything for this particular device and lo and behold it found the a Huawei uh, driver for Windows and also for Mac. So I'm going to download this and install it and see if this rectifies the problem. And uh, I'm going to just quickly open this up and install. Now this could be any particular uh, hardware that you've got that you've plugged in. Another thing you might want to do is unplug all of the hardware that you've got plugged in like uh, hubs and stuff like that just in case that's conflicting and causing a problem make sure you take everything out of the back apart from your keyboard and mouse and then remove any other USB uh, devices that are plugged into the computer. So what we'll do here is let this install and see if we get a resolution to our problem. Now again this is not going to obviously be good for everyone because this is a particular device that I've got plugged in. Now you may have another device and it's asking me to go into my phone settings and enable this feature and you can see straight away it's now detected the actual uh, mobile phone and the driver has now been installed and that's what I needed to do here. Now another thing to remember is any hardware that you plug into the computer normally has a software or driver to run that hardware device and sometimes older hardware sometimes becomes incompatible with uh, modern operating systems and this is pretty normal. You can find drivers that will try and resolve this issue. 
Sometimes the hardware that you're using could be damaged also. But let me just show you some other things that you can do. You want to go to settings and then Windows settings uh, and then go to update and security. You want to make sure that you've got all the latest updates for your Windows operating system. And this can sometimes resolve issues that you may be having with hardware or devices that you're plugging into your computer. So let's move on to the next step, what you can do if you're still having issues with your device. So go right click on the start button and open up PowerShell. This is another thing that you can do uh, with your uh, Windows system to try and resolve the problem. So type in here this command and what we're going to do is do a scan. So it's msd t and dot exe and once we've done that we're going to go space uh, dash id and then space device and then all one word here diagnostic and then this will run a diagnostic test on your system and make sure that you've got the hardware plugged into the computer at this stage and it will try to detect and find uh, the driver or the issue and then try to rectify it. So go to advanced here and once we go to advanced we can apply any sort of repairs automatically and then go next. Now this is one of the probably better troubleshooting tools uh, to try and resolve uh, problems that you've got with uh, hardware and devices that you've got plugged into your Windows operating system. So give this a go. I know some of these troubleshooting tools don't do a lot but it's always worth trying because you never know uh, there might be a fix or a quick uh, resolution to a problem and save you a heap of time and headaches. So let it try and detect any problems while you've got the device plugged into the computer. We'll take a bit of time, so be patient. And then what it will do, if it says there's a, there might be a prompt box popping up. There's going to be different scenarios for everyone. It may have a prompt box saying unknown device. Put the radio button in there and run the scan and it will try to find a resolution to that problem. You can see here it's detected my focus right. Um, control doesn't have a driver. So basically it knows my hardware doesn't have a driver for it. So mostly all, all hardware will need a driver for it to run correctly. So what I'm going to do is apply a fix and then reboot the computer. OK, and you can skip the fix and continue troubleshooting if you wish, and it will move on to the next stage if it's not found a resolution to your problem. So let's go ahead and try to detect additional problems and keep uh, scanning the system until we find a, a res resolution here. So I'm going to let that carry on and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Now, once this is finished, it may ask you to restart the computer. So go ahead and restart the computer and then we'll continue with some of these fixes that you can try to resolve your issue with your device. But before I do that, let's look at the view details here. This can sometimes give you some idea of what's going on and what it's found and what it hasn't found. And uh, normally this is a good place to look for some extra information. So go into the additional information here and have a little look through here and it will tell you the hardware and the devices, the issues that have been found and uh, some other information in here like detection details and stuff like that. So have a good look in there and then restart uh, the PC. So let's go ahead and restart. OK, so I've restarted the PC and we're going to go on to a new thing to try. So we're going to right click on the start button here and go into device manager again. Now inside here we're going to look at the universal uh, serial bus controllers. Now what you need to do here is you can see generic USB hub and you can also see the root USB hub and root USB hub USB 3.0. What you're going to do here is go through here and try to search for any sort of updates that may be available for those. You can also download chipset drivers or anything like that for your motherboard to try and resolve any issues. There may be an update uh, chipset driver that you can go for your manufacturer's website, whether it be HP, Dell or any other type of laptop or any other type of desktop, motherboard desktop, which will be MSI or anything like that. You can go there and check for updates which may be available for your motherboard. That's always another good step to take. So you can search online. Uh, for updates and you can also go through this process where it says generic USB hub uh, and detect and install that update manually through here and this sometimes can resolve uh, the issue 
by reinstalling it and it sometimes fixes that. So just go to your browse my computer. Let me pick from the list and just choose the list there and click next and install it. You can see it going through here. If all this doesn't work after you've done this, then you can uninstall these devices. But you need to go through this whole process because obviously this is uh, essential to try and get uh, your problems fixed, especially with uh, USB devices. So I'm going to quickly go through here and uh, do the rest of these and then we can move on to the next step. So let me just quickly uh, finish this one off and then we'll go to the next step. OK, so next up, what we're going to do is uninstall these. So the generic USB hubs, you need to go in and uninstall these devices. Don't worry, they will come back. So just go into here and remove these. Now, it might be advisable to download all the drivers from your motherboard manufacturer's website just so that you have them ready to go in if there's a problem. OK, so do that first and then you can uninstall all these. Now, remember, you're uninstalling the hubs themselves. So if your mouse and keyboard is plugged into these, you may lose the ability to use that. So be ready to uh, know exactly which ones you're uninstalling. And once you've done uninstalled all these, you can then reboot the computer or you can use the scan for new hardware changes. So let's go ahead and quickly show you how to do that. Go up to the action and then scan for hardware changes or you can restart your computer, whatever is good for you. And hopefully after you've done that, uh, the device should populate and reinstall itself and hopefully it works. If not, um, we can go on to something uh, different. So let me just quickly restart here and uh, we'll go on to the next stage. OK, so we've restarted the computer and we're back to the desktop. Right click and go back into Device Manager and uh, we're going to go ahead and try something else here. So inside your Euro Universal Serial uh, Bus Controllers, go to Show Hidden Devices and you'll see a bunch of devices inside here that have been hidden from your view. Inside here, you may see a bunch of older drivers which you can remove. Just uninstall these and get rid of them. These can also stop you from installing the driver properly or making it recognize the driver. And it can also cause a conf conflict on the system. So just remove these and then try to replug in your device into another port. Maybe for some peculiar reason, your device doesn't like USB 3.0 and it only works in USB 2.0. And it can be a little bit like that. Maybe you're using an older cable or something like that. Just try it and uh, see whether it resolves your problem. If it's not working in the front header of your computer case, try and plug it into the back of the computer to see whether that ro resolves your problem. Next up, go to the website where you've got your motherboard manufacturer and download any sort of drivers for your USB. This can sometimes resolve issues. Uh, you can see there's a latest one here for 2019. If you're plugging in a device and it hasn't got the latest drivers, it may have conflict with that particular device. Another thing here is your BIOS. You can always flash your BIOS if you've got a very old BIOS it may be outdated and you may need to update it. You can see here, improve USB device compatibility. That is very common. People need to keep up to date. And this is a good way to try and resolve any problems or issues with devices that you're trying to plug in to that computer. So check it out and uh, install all the updates, your BIOS and drivers, and hopefully your problem should be resolved. So let's move on to another area where we can go into the settings here of Windows and I'm going to go into power management. So I'm just going to quickly type up the top here power and you should see power and sleep settings inside here. There's another little setting inside here which might help laptop users. You can go into additional power settings here. Click on this one and then up on the top left hand side you want to click on uh, change settings for the plan balanced and click in here and you should see power options inside here. Look for USB settings here and you may have a couple of options available if you're using a laptop. I'm on a desktop here so there's only one option and you can disable this and try and see whether that resolves your issue. If it doesn't you can always put it back to enable but it's worth giving it a shot. Now there's one more thing that I want to uh, show you here. Now this is normally very useful for things that are very hard to detect and they're very hard to define. So you want to use hardware or identifier or something like that to try and find the driver. So I'm going to right click on the start button and go into device manager here and view 
show hidden devices and look for a device which is um, listed here. I'm just going to show you here, like for instance, that focus, right? I'm just going to show you and give you an example here on this blue snowball. Now blue snowball uh, for the Windows 10 was uh, always having a yellow exclamation mark for a while, uh, but I've resolved that problem now. But if you look in hardware ID here, which I was talking about earlier on, you can copy this hardware ID. If you can't get the right driver for it and it's got a yellow exclamation mark there, get the hardware ID. As long as it's listed as known and not unknown, then you can do a search for this particular hardware ID. And you can see here, uh, deviceidentifier.com has uh, detected it as a blue snowball. You can then try and get the driver for that and install it on that device. And this is useful for, uh, you know, obsolete stuff and older stuff. And it's a good way to try and get drivers for those old, old hardware that you may be having that you want to try and uh, bring back to life and use. And after all those fixes, if you're still having major problems with a device, then your only other option is to try and use system restore on the system. And if you don't have any system restore points, then you may need to do a fresh install or may do uh, a repair install, uh, especially if the hardware was working at one stage and it's now not working. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Hope this one helps you out. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.